Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to show you a few more form elements specifically that will create text boxes or types of text boxes. Okay, so in the last video just did a couple standard text boxes. These are going to be tried and true and they will probably be your most often used input type. And of course created that simply with type equals text for that text box. Now for other forms, I've, cr I've created a new form area, its own method in action, its own submit button, and let's go ahead and put in a, a few variations here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a label, and this one's going to be for password. Once again, it's the input tag, but this time it is type equals password. Then I'll put a closing label. So what this is going to do for us, when I refresh, of course a standard text box, person can see the text being typed in, but for a password box, it is hidden behind dots or asterisks or whatever the browser produces. So you have a regular text box and you have a password box. Now keep in mind this type equals password is not encrypting the data being sent and simply hiding it from someone looking at the computer monitor. So it truly to encrypt the data you're going to have to go through a slightly extra expense on your web host on your server and set up an HTTPS page so that that way the data getting sent through the form is encrypted. So don't use this by itself thinking that okay now I can start accepting private data passwords and credit card information and stuff like that have to do a little bit more. Now the other form elements that I want to do here in my other text boxes form are basically some new HTML5 ones. So I'll go ahead and create a label for phone number. And this one's going to be input type equals tell. Do a closing label. And I think while I'm here I'll go ahead and do a copy, paste, and paste. Let's go ahead and ask for phone number email and web address and these will be type equals email no hyphen and type equals URL so I've got type equals tell tel type equals email and type equals URL these are all new HTML5 elements let me go ahead and save that browser and refresh but um, they all basically produced variations of text boxes. I would definitely start using these and why they are nice is going to be particularly for your mobile visitors. If on a mobile phone if someone's using type equals tell their phone keypad will change out to the 10 key so they'll actually have phone number fields and if it's type equals email they're going to get a, a keyboard that is email friendly. It'll include the at symbol things like that and for the web address it'll be URL friendly type equals URL it's going to give them probably the HTTP protocol thing and it'll certainly give a little .com, .edu option button on there too. So there's a few of the new HTML5 input types. Type equals tell, type equals email, type equals URL. Okay, now there's another new one too. Let's go and try this one out. Label search form. And I'll go ahead and put in input, if I can spell it here, type equals search. So there's a special input type to be meant to use just for search boxes. And if I head back over to my browser, we'll see that we get another text box. Let's see how this one's a little bit different though. Notice when I start to type, I get this option to clear out. So basically this is the browser's interpretation of these new uh, form elements. So input type search. I get this little X so I can clear that out. I don't get that with a other form of text box. Okay, so that's type equals search. Now, last but not least, for my other text boxes, I want to put in a text area box. So, basic text box just allows you to type in one line of text, about 255 characters, but you can set up an option for the user to enter in more text, like a comment box, contact form, uh, post form, let's say if it's a blog website or something like that. So, back over in the editor, I'm down here in my other text boxes area. I'm going to go ahead and put in a label. I'll call this uh, label comments. And then I'm going to use a text area tag. So the text area box is a little different than the regular input. For the most part, I've been using input and then some type attribute with a particular value. Now I'm doing a text area, and there's an opening and closing text area tag, and then I'll do my closing label. And that's really all it takes right there. Text area tag, 
nothing in between, opening and closing, and then that, uh, then I've got it wrapped in a label. So when I save this, head back over to my browser and refresh, I now have a nice little text area box where I can type in multiple lines of text. There is a little bit of a sizing control, but this is a browser feature, so I can click and drag that and control this that's with the browser. Okay, but I did do some uh, some sizing by default though. So what you didn't see when I had the recorder turned off is I did create a style for my uh, text areas. So my input tags, my labels, my inputs that are descendants of labels and my text areas that are descendants of labels, they happen to have a width of 160 pixels. And then I went a step further and I took my text area tag and I set its height to 5M. Okay, 5Ms, so I can uh, the height of a capital letter M at a normal font size. Um, actually, it's a width measurement. So I can control how that text area looks. Now there's a couple other attributes you might use, rows and calls, C-O-L-S, but I'm going to kind of get away from that and let's just style it with our CSS. And if you have any content in between the opening and closing text area tags, that content actually does show up inside of your text area box when, when you refresh. And that's, of course, rarely done. So most of the time you are going to have nothing in between that opening and closing text area box.